You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela and Marcel, episode number 139. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the podcast this week. I am coming to you today from San Antonio, Texas, where we just wrapped up the fall conference of the Obesity Medicine Association. I've been here for two and a half days, rubbing elbows with my colleagues, a few of whom uh, get regularly interviewed by national news outlets. So I've been having a great time and I'm learning a lot. And I am going to share a lot about what I've been learning uh, with you all today. How are things back home, Marshall? Um, things back home are great. I am so excited to be doing this podcast with you today because I know how you get after an obesity <laughs> medicine conference. You're very motivated and very excited yeah. and want to share everything that you've learned with all of us. So yep. I'm excited to hear what you have to share with us today. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, a lot of this, a lot of what I'm going to share with you is like, fresh information. And it's so fresh, it's not even off the presses yet. So in other words, the research hasn't been published yet, Um, but it will be soon. And I want all of you who are listening to this podcast to be up to date. Okay, so very exciting. Now, I want everyone to remember that obesity is a disease. I say this a lot. And most people don't really understand what I mean. Like when I say obesity is a disease, Marshall, do you kind of understand what that means by now? I do. (laughs) Yeah, I've heard it just a couple of (laughs) times. Just a couple of times. Okay. (laughs) So it's a complex metabolic disease and only one of its manifestations is weight gain. So there are a lot of other physical ramifications that we have to address as specialists in obesity medicine. So before I talk about obesity as a disease and all of the ramifications. I do want to talk just briefly about the food here at this conference, which was fascinating to me. So we don't get standard conference food. (laughs) They don't give us the usual stuff, like no pastries and cereal for breakfast. You've been to these conferences, Marshall. Like, have you been to these conferences? Where Well, not an obesity medicine conference, but I've been to a medical conference and it's all like pastries Uh and fruit and and, and a lot of sweets, a lot of donuts and things like that. Pasta Alfredo for lunch, lasagna for dinner. Yeah, that kind of stuff. We don't get that, which is wonderful. We have amazing, beautiful, healthy food. So, and because, you know, we're in Texas, there's definitely been like a Southwestern theme to it all. So for example, for breakfast on the first day, we had this beautiful spread that included spiced chorizo. Am I saying that right? Yep, that's how you have chorizo, yes. Yeah, it's a Mexican spiced sausage and there was salsa. And so we put that over our eggs, it was delicious. And for lunch and dinner, there's just been all kinds of different types of salads and tons of vegetables. The food here has been awesome. Oh, that I know. It sounds so good. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry. I will tell you something interesting, though. Um, they provided desserts. So like oh, little really? mini. Yeah, little mini desserts. Hmm. Like little cakes and pastries. And I was surprised. So... For those of you listeners who struggle with all the social temptations to eat, I just want you to know that you can't get away from it. Not even at an obesity medicine conference can you get away from it. That's how completely indoctrinated we are as a society, that sugar and flour is an absolute necessity in our food supply. They also had juices too. I was just really, really surprised. Okay, so I am speaking for our listeners right now, but I have a question for you. Okay. Did you eat any of the desserts? You know, I didn't. I didn't. It was tempting. Oh, good. Yeah. I watched one of my colleagues say, I actually wouldn't usually eat this stuff, but my kids aren't here, so I'm going to. (laughs) I'm going to give myself a treat. (laughs) I thought it was funny. Um, But for me, all it took was for me to remember how it was just going to set off a bunch of cravings, and it was easy for me to say, no, thank you. It was really, really easy. So... 
what did I learn at this conference? It was an amazing, brilliant conference. I want to give a little bit of background first. So we now recognize that obesity is a disease. As a matter of fact, the AMA pronounced obesity as a disease exactly 10 years ago. So back in 2013, I want to explain a little bit about what it means that obesity is a disease because most of our medical colleagues still don't understand this. Most people think obesity is a failure of willpower, that we just eat too much and we don't exercise enough. And what we need to do is to stop eating so much and exercise, and that's going to fix everything. And we hear this all the time, right, Marcel? Like, yes, we, we do. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, we hear it a lot from our primary care providers, which, which is sad. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So many of our patients come in thinking, patients and our online clients as well, like they come into us and they think something's really, really wrong with them. And they may even be very successful people in many other respects, but this weight problem has just never been solved. Yeah. I mean, I remember before you ever told me or, you know, I'd met you that obesity mm -hmm. was a disease and I felt really defeated and I felt like it was a willpower problem. I remember mm -hmm. just, you know, that, that, that feeling before I yeah. was freed and uh -huh. with the knowledge that it is yeah. a disease. It's not, yeah. it's not my bad choices. It's not willpower. It's mm -hmm. not um, a broken personality. Right. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the diet and fitness industry has perpetuated this myth that this is a character flaw that can be solved with diet and exercise. And this really couldn't be further from the truth. And here's a quote from the conference that I want everyone to remember. The quote was attributed to Dr. Lee Kaplan, but I think I actually heard Dr. Robert Lustig say it first. And here's the quote, overeating does not cause obesity. Obesity causes overeating. Heck yeah, that is true. <laughs> yep. So this is no character flaw. This is a disease that results in massive hunger and cravings. There is a neural hormonal derangement in the brain's appetite regulation system. So that was a mouthful of words. And so I want to explain to you what I mean. There's a very specific part of your brain. It's kind of like a thermostat that tells you when it's time to eat and when it's time to stop eating, and it's regulating your weight, okay? So when we're born, it works perfectly, but when we have obesity, it doesn't work at all. So the body thinks it's starving when you have obesity, and it will do whatever it can to store fat. Hunger hormones are higher. Cravings are intense. There's very little sense of fullness. And all of these stupid low-calorie diets that we go on just make the whole problem so much worse. Yeah, I mean, my my brain understands what you're saying, mm -hmm. but um, it's really hard to believe this. I know, I know, I totally get that. We all think we just need to use more willpower. But I'd like to ask you, if you could control your hormones with willpower, why don't you ladies just pop an egg out of your ovary? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. That's a hormonally <laughs> regulated process, right? Just use oh your willpower and pop out yeah. an egg. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't work, right? You can't just pop out an egg. You cannot go against your biology. And so in the same way, trying to tell someone whose body thinks it's starving to just stop eating and move more is an absolutely ridiculous idea. And yet here we are. Your own doctor will tell you that. Just stop eating so much and move more and get over it, right? So I am saying unequivocally, without doubt, that obesity is a disease. And I'm going to go through the criteria for what a disease is, and you tell me if obesity meets that criteria. All right, let's do it. Okay, a disease is an illness, a sickness, or an ailment. Does obesity meet that criteria? Um, yes. Yeah. And adverse anatomic changes to an organ or system of the body. I would say yes. Check. Yes. Dysfunction of an organ or system of the body. Definitely <laughs> yes. 
not an organ or system, multiple organs or systems of the body. Contributes to increased morbidity. That means sickness. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely yes. Contributes to increased mortality or death. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Caused by genetic or developmental errors. We have evidence that there are genes that are involved in obesity, for sure. All right, then yes. Includes an inflammatory process or some sort of infectious process. In the case of obesity, it's inflammation. Okay? Yep. So yes. there's a lot more to this, but what I can say is that obesity meets all the criteria for a disease and it was um, declared by the American Medical Association 10 years ago that it is indeed a disease. And yet, almost no one is receiving treatment for this disease. It's as if 70% of the country had high blood pressure or diabetes, and yet no one was being treated. So we wouldn't tolerate this with other diseases, and yet we tolerate it with obesity because so many of us believe that it's a willpower issue. Isn't that interesting, Marcel? <laughs> like, yeah, I was going to say mostly insurance companies <laughs> need to true, listen yeah. to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So obesity has among its properties a disorder in fat cell physiology. So what that means in simple terms is that fat cells don't work correctly. So I've talked a lot about visceral fat or sick fat. This is the belly fat that's so toxic and dangerous to us. These are the fat cells that don't work correctly. So these fat cells are killing us from the inside out. And obesity affects every other organ system in the body and puts us at risk for heart disease, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, asthma, sleep apnea. It takes eight years off of our lives. This is a serious problem that affects everyone. Even if you're listening to this podcast and you don't have obesity, someone in your life does have it. And so you're going to be affected by it. So the motto of the Obesity Medicine Association is treat obesity first. The complications of obesity are wide ranging from hypertension, insulin resistance, diabetes, cholesterol problems, liver disease. And I learned for the first time at this conference that our kidneys are actually affected by this disease, kidneys. So like even if you don't have diabetes, you can have kidney failure as a complication of obesity. Isn't that crazy? Like, <laughs> Yeah, wow. I, did, I had no idea. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, how would you? I hadn't told you that because I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have treatments for obesity. We have drugs. We have metabolic surgery, which is the weight loss surgery, which is now called metabolic surgery. But hardly anyone is being treated adequately. Our patients and clients are, of course, but most people are not being treated because they're doctors just tell them to go on a diet and join a gym. Most doctors don't even understand that this is a treatable disease. Yeah, that's that's the sad part of it. I know, yeah. So what I want everyone listening to this podcast to understand is that obesity is a chronic, which means long-lasting, progressive, relapsing disease. What this means is that once you have it, you're always going to have it. It's not going to go away. You can not You can get it under really, really good control. You can stop the weight gain. You can lose weight, but you might have relapses. And if you don't get it under control, it will get worse over time. So it behooves you to do whatever you can to get it under control as soon as possible. And whatever you do to get it under control, you have to keep doing or it will go back out of control. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So do you understand what this means in terms of treatment? You have to stay on the treatment or the disease will come back, which means if you're taking medications and most people with obesity likely need medications, you need to stay on them. Whatever nutrition plan works for you, you need to keep doing it. The diet industry has done us a huge disservice by telling us we should just restrict until the weight is off and then we can go back to eating quote unquote normally, which usually means eating a whole bunch of crap food. Like that's never has and that never will work. 
Does that make sense? No, I've tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. So with this background story, I get a little bit passionate about this. Um, but I want to tell you what I learned this weekend. So our first lecture was called the tipping point. So we're at a tipping point in our treatment of this disease. And it's really, really exciting. We have new drugs that are amazing. And there are a whole bunch more in the pipeline. These are, of course, the GLP-1 analogs, like Ozempic, originally used to treat diabetes, but now being used to treat obesity under the brand name Wagovi. So we think of these drugs as third-generation drugs. So let me explain what I mean by that. The first-generation drugs are drugs like Phentermine, which I still find really valuable and I use all the time, which can really help re-regulate people's disordered appetite system. Because remember, when people have obesity, what they don't realize is that their brains don't work properly. And so they don't get the signal to stop eating like they should. If everything was working normally, you'd be like a one-year-old baby who just eats until he's full and then starts storing the rest of his food on the floor and laughs as the dog eats it. <laughs> Remember when your babies were little and they did that? Yes. The babies, the baby's done eating and ready to go do something else, like doesn't want to think about food anymore. It's time to play. That is a brain where the appetite center is working normally. So when people have developed obesity, appetite center registers hunger a lot. People never really feel full. I explained this. There's a lot of food chatter. And people with obesity find food to be very enticing even if they know they've eaten enough to meet their nutritional needs and their energy needs, they're still wanting to eat. And again, this is not a character flaw. This is due to the chemistry of the disease and how it affects the brain. So I'm repeating this because I really want you to understand this. So these drugs that we're using help to correct the brain's appetite regulation system. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I can say from experience, like I actually use these medications. I've used all mm -hmm. of these medications and they mm -hmm. really, really help. Yeah. Yeah. So the first generation drugs like Phentermine came out in the late 50s and early 60s. So they've been around longer than me. And then in the 90s, we had Fenfen. -fen. Now that one turned out to be dangerous for a few people. So they had to take that one off the market. Um, I would consider that a second generation drug because it was a combination drug. So for a long time, we didn't have any other options for treating this disease. And then in 2012, we got another one of the second generation combination drugs. And this one was a combination of fentramine with topiramate, and it's called Kissemia. Now, most people have probably never heard of this because most people aren't getting treated for obesity. But those of us who treat obesity have been using the combination of fentramine and topiramate for a long time, usually generically. Later, we got another second generation drug called Contrave, which is another combination medication. And these medications work on different areas of the brain's appetite regulation system. So those are the second generation ones. Now we're at a tipping point because now we have these really effective third generation drugs like Wagovi and Manjaro, which is actually a drug that's used for diabetes, but it is about to get approved for obesity. Its generic name is terzepatide. So be watching for that. These drugs are showing, and this is some of the exciting stuff. These drugs are showing that they're also effective at preventing some of the complications of obesity, like heart disease. As a matter of fact, next week, I believe it's going to be November 11th, a study is going to be presented showing just how great terzepatide is at preventing further cardiovascular disease in people who've already had some form of cardiovascular disease, whether it's been a heart attack or stroke or peripheral artery disease. So these are all different types of diseases of the blood vessels and they manifest in different ways. And terzepatide is showing that it can prevent um, the recurrence. So you're probably going to hear all about this in the news in the next few weeks. So you heard it here first. <laughs> these are just really, really exciting outcomes. And those of us in the obesity medicine world are just so excited about this. Yeah, I agree. I'm so excited just to, to have these medications that work so well for everyone. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, 
The problem is that many insurance companies are refusing to pay for these medications. So they're pretty expensive. So for many people struggling with obesity and its complications, they aren't really an option. And that's really, really frustrating for those of us who specialize in treating this disease. So these medications could be difficult to get for at least the next three to five years. Um, For those of you listening to this podcast, if you have a way of going to the human resources department of your employer and asking them to cover these medications, tell them you would like to be treated for obesity with the most up-to-date treatments and see if you can advocate for yourself. That would be a really good idea. Um, You could also ask your doctor to advocate for you as well. So the medical insurance industry doesn't really realize that obesity is a disease that deserves treatment yet. And if they would just treat obesity first, they wouldn't have to pay for all the complications, right? Yeah. I mean, I I could just speak from my own experience with this. So this, you know, this happened with our insurance, our medical insurance. I'm on my husband's and Mm -hmm. the doctor wrote a letter for Uh us and, um, and we, you know, we pushed to get it. And our insurance covers it now. And I think they just maybe weren't aware of the, you know, weight loss um, necessity part of our insurance. I think a lot of insurances are like that. So if you have, you know, your primary care or your obesity Mm -hmm. medicine doctor write um, Mm -hmm. an advocating letter for you. Um, Also on some of these medications, there are, there's a place on the website to print out a letter in, I, I can't remember, I don't know the word I'm trying to say here. <laughs> just, just a letter to the... Like a, um, like a um, what's the word we're looking for? Like a, yeah, a standardized letter. Yeah, a standardized yeah, yeah. So letter you can, yeah, so some, you some of, yeah, some of your insurance companies have those letters that you can print out. But I mean, until we start really making our insurance companies aware that these medications are necessary, then um, I don't think a lot is going to change. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I also want to say that <laughs> Many of my colleagues are advocating at the federal level. So they're advocating at the American Medical Association. They're advocating in Congress. They're advocating um, in Washington for, and I'm talking about Washington, the capital of the U.S. Washington, right, for adequate treatment of this disease. And it's just going to take time. You know, it just is. But Mm -hmm. I do want all of our listeners to know that there's hope. Like, you're not going to have to struggle with this disease for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, you are going right. to have to, you are going to have to keep this disease under control, but you're going to have help doing it. And so we're just trying to get the word out. Okay. So that is the gist of the medication update that I have for you today. We had a lot of other great talks. We had a great talk on liver disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a very common complication of obesity. Marshall, guess what the number one cause of death is for someone who has liver disease? Um, Liver failure? (laughs) That's what I thought. Absolutely. It's fascinating to me. I thought liver failure, liver cancer, but it's actually heart disease. Isn't that interesting? Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The reason is that the liver manages our cholesterol metabolism. And when that's not functioning correctly, we develop cholesterol buildup in our arteries and we end up with the plaques that cause heart disease. And the prevalence of liver disease is very, very high. About 30% of adults have it. And it even affects children, which I was shocked to find out. About 13 to 14% of children have evidence that their livers are struggling. And this puts them at increased risk for heart attacks at a very young age. Gosh, this is shocking information. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want, again, realize how important it is to treat obesity first. We had another awesome lecture on the correlation of mental health disorders and obesity. For example, depression and anxiety are highly correlated with obesity. And we're not sure which comes first. Does obesity cause depression or does depression result in obesity? Either way, this was a great lecture on how to help people with obesity who are struggling with their mental health and how to do it without prescribing medications that could make obesity worse. Sometimes people are taking medications that cause obesity without even knowing that that's happening. So again, another reason why you need to be seeing an obesity medicine specialist. So. That was 
all of that was just happening on day one. Interesting. Wow. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I that's know. a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And after all of these lectures, there was a party and there was an armadillo race at this party. <laughs> Can you believe what? it? That, no, <laughs> I've, I've never heard of such a thing. We're in Texas, right? So armadillos are everywhere, but I'd never seen an armadillo before, even though I was actually born in Texas, not too far from here in San Antonio. So I got to see two armadillos race from one side of a 16-foot-long pen to the other side. Our president and our past president competed to see whose armadillo was faster. It was actually really hilarious because they were allowed to direct their armadillos, but armadillos don't really understand how to take directions from humans. (laughs) And they don't understand how to race each other. So it was really quite entertaining to watch. (laughs) I bet you that it was hilarious. Um, Yeah, it was. So so which armadillo won the race? Oh, which armadillo won? I was rooting for the president. Her name is Angela. So I wanted Angela's armadillo to win. But unfortunately, it was Ethan's armadillo that won. Sorry, Ethan. He's the immediate past president. So his armadillo won. All right. Well, congratulations, so, Ethan's armadillo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want everyone listening to know that those of us who practice obesity medicine also know how to have good, clean fun at our conferences. <laughs> it sounds fun. <laughs> it was fun. The rest of the conference was also amazing. We had another lecture on mental health. This one was focused on eating disorders. So, you know, you think of people with eating disorders as like skinny women, like you think of anorexia or bulimia as skinny women, but that's absolutely not true. So I learned that most people with eating disorders are actually struggling with obesity too. And I learned that men struggle just as much as women with binge eating disorder. And here's something that really shocked me. The mortality rate for eating disorders is 20%. So what that means is that one in five people with eating disorders will die of their eating disorder. Isn't that crazy? I know. Yeah. And there's so much shame around eating disorders that most people who suffer, suffer in silence and they don't tell anyone about the problem. So I would encourage anyone listening to this podcast who's struggling with binge eating or bulimia or anorexia, or they call it atypical anorexia, which is this starvation purge cycle to please reach out to us. Just email us at info at journeybeyondweightloss.com and we can connect you with someone who understands and can help you. I don't want to see people dying of eating disorders when there is treatment for eating disorders. Very high mortality. Yeah. I mean, please reach out if you're suffering and you feel like Mm -hmm. you need help. Yeah. So, you know, I learned more at this conference but I think I need to stop. (laughs) Like my staff always hates it when I come home from conferences because I'm so excited by what I learn, right, Marshall? (laughs) Yeah, I know, yep. Like I spend so much time. We don't hate it, we we love it. We just like to, you get really motivated and just want to do a bunch of things. And so it's kind of fun Yeah, I want to change everything about the practice and then I'm talking to patients forever. I was going to say that. I was going to say that, but I don't want to. People are backed up in the waiting room and, you know, it's like, ugh. Come on, Dr. Angelo, we've got people (laughs) waiting. They need to get back to their jobs. (laughs) All right. Well, I guess the most important thing that I want all of our listeners to understand is that obesity is a disease and anyone who has this disease deserves the most advanced treatments possible. Treatment of this disease is multifaceted. It includes nutrition, obviously, medications, surgery if needed, Behavioral management, for example, working on habits, understanding the psychology, which we talk a lot about on this podcast and we work on in detail and in depth in Empowered Weight Loss. It includes exercise. It includes treatment of all the complications of obesity. Remember that if you take the approach of treating obesity first, you can oftentimes treat all the complications at the same time. So, treating obesity is a complex process and goes way beyond just joining Weight Watchers or just taking Phentermine pills or doing Wagovi injections. And that's why we do what we do. And we're learning more all the time. So if you want help, 
you can get started with my How to Get Rid of Belly Fat course, where I'm going to teach you all the specifics about obesity as a disease and how to treat it. Remember, belly fat is visceral fat, so this is the, the sick fat, and we want to work really hard at reducing that so that you can be healthy and we can get rid of some of these complications. Or the other thing you can do is to just go directly into the Empowered Weight Loss Membership. You can do it that way too. Even better, just do both. (laughs) Just go to journeybeyondweightloss.com to learn more. Do you have anything you want to add, Marshall? No, that's it. Just enjoy the rest of um, whatever you're doing. And we'll see you when you get back. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. And we will see you next week. Take care. Bye now. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.